In this lecture, we will look into the phosphorus storage and release from pea impacted wetland soils. Most of our previous lectures were on upland soils, though we have seen some of the preliminary information in earlier modules. Risk assessment of wetland soils is somewhat similar to that of the upland soils, with our intention being to predict what would happen at a phosphorus application site and how the phosphorus would affect the water quality leaving that particular site. First, we look at the conventional techniques that we have used before. These include wet versus air drying soil prior to chemical analysis, and that makes a huge difference in water soluble P, malic 1P, or malic 3P values. Now, the recommendation is to air dry the soil if comparison is to be made with upland soils and across a period of time. We also noted that fractionation schemes are operationally defined and hence results cannot be compared when different schemes are used. And finally, during isotherm determination, Comparison of isotherm parameters among soils is possible only if isotherms are developed under identical conditions. Most of these are conventional techniques that have been used that were applicable to upland soils are also applicable to wetland soils. We looked at the threshold PSR for wetland soils. We noticed that the change in the slope of the curve occurred at about the same point as that of the uplands. That is, the P saturation ratio is 0.1. Or it's, it's close to 0.1, and for all practical purposes, 0.1 can be used as the threshold PSR. The following equation can be used for calculation of SPSC using P, iron, and aluminum in a malic 1 solution. This is the same equation that we used for upland soils. SPSC is equal to 0.1 minus the soil PSR multiplied by iron and aluminum and then again multiplied by 31 to convert the moles to milligrams P per kilogram. But when we use malic 1 instead of the original procedure using oxalate, we need to multiply by a conversion factor of 1.3. This is the same conversion factor that we used for upland salts and that was explained previously. Note that um, the SPSC can also be calculated using malic 3P iron and aluminum, but at this point I would express some caution in using malic 3P iron and aluminum in SBSC calculations for wetland soils. We have discussed the reasons in an earlier module. And now let us look at the relationship between SBSC and water soluble P. Water soluble P in this diagram is on the x-axis and SBSC is on the y-axis. We have seen this graph before. This is a graph generated from eight beef ranches within the Okeechobee Basin. Note that organic matter in a wetland has no influence on positive SBSC. Peace option is related to iron and aluminum only. In this particular example, organic matter is between zero and 90% for both positive and negative SBSC. When a soil or a wetland soil, uh, the P is released from the wetland soil, uh, the phosphorus is held by the soil as long at its, as it is below the threshold PSR. In other words, when SBSC is positive, any additional P released by the organic matter will be held by the soil. Finding. Let us look at EPC0 for wetland soils. We have seen this earlier. EPC 
is four times higher under anaerobic conditions. Remember, these are all relative and depends on the procedure that's used in the isotherm determination. And now let us look at the SPSC value for a wetland soil profile. The soil in consideration here are spodosols, and the total P is 328 milligram P per kilogram in the surface horizon. What we find is the total P decreases at the E horizon and increases after P reaches the spodic horizon, that is the BH horizon. And also, in this particular figure, SPSC, which is positive, is to your right, and the negative SPSC is to the left. So you'll find that SPSC is negative until P reaches the more P retentive BH horizon. So the soil is the P source until P reaches reaches the BH horizon. I would like you to note in particular the total P at the surface, which is about th which is 328 milligrams P per kilogram. Now we will look at SBSC values for a ditch soil profile. In this particular diagram, the SBSC is on the x-axis with the negative SBSC to your left and the positive SBSC to your right. And uh, the depth is, is indicated as the vertical axis. Note that the total P in the surface is 230 milligrams P per kilogram, which is slightly less than what you have seen in the earlier uh, wetland soil profile. The TP decreases as it reaches the E horizon and then increases once it reaches the spodic or the pH horizon. But let us now look at the SPSC values. What we find is that the SPSC is negative throughout the soil profile. And what this means is the soil is a P source throughout the soil profile and it's a P source at the BH horizon as well. Now, if we look just at the TP values of the surface horizons, we may believe that this particular ditch salt profile is less of a problem than the wetland profile that we just uh, saw in the previous slide. But actually, the greater problem here is with this particular ditch soil profile. Note also that the depth here to the BH horizon is shallower than that for the wetland soils in the previous slide. Now let us look at the SBSC for a wetland soil profile. This is a different profile than the one that we uh, discussed earlier. This wetland profile is on a passenger, it's not on spodosols. Now the total P at the surface horizon is 231 milligram P per kilogram, which is comparable to the one that we looked at earlier in the ditch soil profile, and even less than that in the other wetland soil profile located on spodosols. The total P here is variable throughout the rest of the soil profile, but let us now concentrate on the SBSC value. The SBSC is slightly negative at the surface. There is some, some potential for P loss, but it's a very slight potential. Then the P is a sink for most of the soil profile up to 160 centimeter or 180 centimeter depth. So the, the, you know, it is very unlikely that P is going to be lost from the soil. Again, if you look at the total P levels, the total P levels are not much different in the surface horizon from the other two soil profiles. And now here are some of the take home points. The total P in the surface soil of a wetland or ditch is not an indicator of P loss from the soil. A more P retentive soil, example the passenger, is less likely to lose P compared to a spodosol 
even if loaded at the same total P level. It is necessary to sample solids beneath the surface, 10 centimeters for example, to evaluate P risk from a wetland or ditch soil. Below the threshold PSR of 0.1, P storage is dictated by the mineral component of the soil. Organic matter in a soil will not be important as far as P release is concerned below the threshold PSR. This also tells us now that wetland soils are not everlasting P sinks. However, this is just uh, taken from a couple of uh, really impacted soils here and most of wetland soils will continue to be P sinks. With this, here are some of the references that we have used in this particular presentation. Thank you.